and we are live. How's it going, everyone? Andrew, coming back with Fantasy Ryan again. How's Ryan doing today? I'm doing great. Glad to be here, Andrew. Um, it's been an interesting couple weeks so far with everything with the COVID and schedule changes and everything else, but glad to be back. Yep, glad glad to have you back. Ryan is reprising his role as our fantasy guru this week after a one week filling with uh, with Mike, who did admirable admirable job, and I'm sure he'll be on future podcasts. But glad be nice to have to all three of us at one point. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, glad to have the OG back in the house tonight. So, uh, quite some interesting news since the last time we were on. We got a chance to talk. Uh, the big one's probably Lev Bell has found a brand new home with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, uh, fantasy implications with that. Uh, what do you see going forward for Lev Bell? You know, it's uh, for Lev Bell. It's probably about the same to me because with the Jets, he's in that bad offense. He really didn't get going much. I know everyone who drafted him last year was very disappointed with what happened, and everyone who drafted him at the beginning of this year obviously was mm -hmm. disappointed because he played for basically three quarters against the Bills, and then he was hurt and he came back and didn't really do much last week. Or yeah, so um, – and now he's going to be going over to the Chiefs where you have Hilaire. So I think it's going to be more of a timeshare there, and they're going to be splitting carries. So it's going to be instead of him getting – Hilaire getting 20 carries a game, they're each going to get about 10. Yeah. That's how I see it going. Um, I don't know if you have a different opinion on that, but – I see a slight uptick in fantasy production, him going to the Chiefs. Naturally, he's in the better offense, wow. even if he is – Splitting yeah. carries there. I kind of see Lev Bell filling kind of the Kareem Hunt role that Kareem Hunt fills in Cleveland with uh, with Nick Chubb being like the Baron Ram and then uh, Kareem Hunt being the all-around all guy. I see Lev Bell being mostly like the primary receiving back out of the backfield. Maybe on, on, on third downs he comes in and catches. And Hilaire has been uh, – he's, he's looked okay, but he's actually looked god-awful in the red zone and he's really squandered his opportunities when um, they're inside the 10 this year. So I see Lev Bell coming in and being that goal line back and really kind of hammering it in. So he'll be kind of touchdown dependent, uh, but he'll also probably get you five, four to five catches out, out of the backfield each week. And then, you know, seven, seven to 10 carries per week too. That's, um, that's, that's enough to put up some solid fantasy points for the Kansas City offense. So I do see a, an uptick for him. I see him as probably a, uh, probably a, a low end RB two going forward the rest of the year. Um, high end flex, low end RB two. And he might have some weeks here where he kind of, you know, puts up some top 15 numbers, but they'll be sporadic. I don't see it happening on a week to week basis, but he'll probably hover around that 20 to 25 range for, Great. For running backs, you can do a whole lot worse with that, especially with a bunch of scarcity at the position. If anything were to happen that with a uh, Polaire, I see uh, Bell just skyrocketing up, being oh. be, being a low end RB one probably the rest of the year uh, in, yeah. that, in that offense. There, I mean, uh, it's tough to see. It'll be interesting to see how Andy Reid uses him. Uh, I know a lot of people think that Le Bell has lost a, a step. Uh, I'm not really here to comment on whether he has or hasn't because I'm not quite sure. Uh, I know that the Jets have uh, a historically terrible offense, and many have said that Adam Gase misutilized Le'Veon Bell. So all it would take is someone who really knows how to utilize Lev Bell the way he's meant to be utilized, and he could just have another resurgence again like he did in Pittsburgh. I'm not quite sure. Uh, like I think the jury's out on that. I know Lev Bell has had a lot of wear and tear on his tires uh, when he was in Pittsburgh, but he says he's says he's ready to go. He really has, hasn't had too much wear and tear on uh, over the last couple of years uh, in New York. So uh, we'll see. We'll just yep. have to see. I, I'm with you on that. I, I expect him to be that between that 15 to 25 range. Um, going forward, like you said, unless something happens to Lair and then obviously skyrockets depending on his usage yeah. and how they decide to go about things in Kansas City. It should be interesting. Yeah, I think I think if you drafted Lev Bell, which is probably somewhere from a late third round pick, somewhere in maybe an early fifth round pick, somewhere in that range there, uh, I think you got to be pretty happy with how things have ended up with Lev Bell so far. He's 
not going to be that bell cow uh, that he was in New York, but I think half of Lev Bell on a KC offense is going to be better than a full Lev Bell on a New York offense. So great. Uh, we'll see. So going forward, uh, more COVID news. Uh, you've already seen some reshuffling. The Bills uh, have been affected pretty much a lot. Uh, having to play the Tennessee Titans on a Tuesday, only the third Tuesday game in NFL history. Uh, and as a result, the Kansas City game, which was scheduled for Thursday, is now being played this Monday. Uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, I believe the Falcons have also tested positive this week at the time of this recording, but the game is still scheduled to be played with no hiccups. Uh, obviously, with all this reshuffling, our league, and I'm sure everyone's league, has been greatly affected. Um, we've even added an extra bench spot this year to kind of alleviate some potential reshuffling yep. of matchups, but even with the added bench spot, a lot of us have been negatively affected, and it's affected how we've been able to configure some lineups going forward. Um, nothing too, too serious yet to the point where you're just kind of having to, like, drop significantly good players or rolling out with, like, bye week players in, in there. And nothing to that magnitude yet, but we're still really early. We're only on week six. Uh, so – or, week, yeah, week six right now. So yep. – uh, we're coming up really close on the on the point where the bye weeks are going to be be done, and then what do you do when all the bye weeks are done? You got to push back games and stuff. So, uh, what's your what's your thoughts on this so far? Like, how how are you handling your fantasy team over on your end? I mean, right now it's it's interesting because even even this week I'm affected. Uh, I have to start Loyal P Ryan, and it's my second running back because. With the draft, obviously, we went through that recap before. I had Gurley. Eckler obviously got hurt, but I was able to pick up Jackson um, and Josh Jacobs. But because of all of the rescheduling and shuffling around of the NFL schedules, all of a sudden, Jacobs and Jackson now have the same bye week. Mm -hmm. The Chargers and the Raiders weren't supposed to have the same bye week. So when that happened, that threw me into a situation where all of a sudden, okay, I got Gurley, but now I don't have a second running back. Yeah. So – um, yeah, and, and with us adding the extra bench spot and an IR spot this year, the running back pool is very, very tough out there right mm -hmm. now for our league, and I'm sure much, many other leagues are uh, going through the same problem of not having, you know, uh, not having a lot to choose from out there in the running back spot, which it was already thin to begin with. No, I'm not one to really base my draft around bye weeks. I usually just, I mean, some people really take that in, into effect. If yep. you are one of those people, you got to be like pulling your hair right now to like making sure that you always have a contingency plan for bye weeks and you draft around bye weeks and stuff like that. But I mean, holy cow, our bye weeks just being like, I feel like every team's going to be affected by this sooner rather than later. My biggest fear is uh, once the bye weeks are gone, and you get into those weeks 14, 15, 16, and you start to, like, reshuffle games around or maybe maybe push some teams out to, like, a week 19 or a week 20 or something like that and then push the playoffs back some. Like, I feel like that's might be what we're getting into. Yep. Can you imagine being in, like, you know, like a, like a week, week 15, you're battling for a championship spot, and, uh, like, three of your studs, Get their get their games pushed to a week nineteen, which makes them on a on a pseudo bye week in yep. your in the most important matchup that you have of, of the year. I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better, and I can just see that really like like that could ruin your 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 season. You could be like you'd be so close to a championship, and boom, all of a sudden you're like your players get – your team gets hit with some COVID stuff and three – your your top three three guys are out, you know, and, for for a playoff game, you know. So – And this and this goes back to kind of what we talked about in the first podcast that we did for fantasy football there, you know, a couple months ago or however long ago it was, um, where we were talking, like, what's going to happen with COVID? How's it going to affect the season? What's it going to yeah. do for fantasy football? And now we're kind of starting to see how it's shaking out. Schedules are getting changed. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, you got a game that was supposed to be on a Thursday night, but now it's all of a sudden the Tuesday before or yeah. the next Tuesday. 
all right, or even a, a Sunday game that all of a sudden gets moved to Tuesday. Now what do you do? Okay, so, for example, last weekend, the Titans and the Bills went from Sunday to Tuesday, right? So if you have Diggs or if you have um, Derrick Henry or Josh Allen or any of those guys, mm -hmm. you're – you're basically banking on that game playing, but all of a sudden, all it takes is on Monday morning, one of the Titans coming back positive, and that game gets canceled and moved to a bye week. Yeah. And you've got – you have no one to play. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Even even throughout the season, you're going to see that where, okay, you've got to make a decision. Do I, do I run the risk of leaving those guys in the lineup for a Tuesday game and having that game get canceled and taking zeros? Or do I play guys that are in a tougher matchup or obviously weaker from a fantasy standpoint just so I make sure I get points because I know those guys are going to play? And yeah, it's gonna it, be it, it, it happened with, with, with my, my, my matchup as well. I mean, uh, going into those Sunday matchups, I'm, I'm deciding whether to keep A.J. Brown in as a flex or put in a player that I wasn't as confident about um, but knew the game was on because I didn't want to get – locked yep. in and then all of a sudden boom come Tuesday morning I find that bit that game's been pushed back for a few weeks right. and then and then I'm stuck with AJ Brown uh in that flex box all the other games have been played now yep. my opponent was stuck in the same thing uh with with him having Josh Allen he uh he actually went ahead and benched him up until uh, about 12:59 uh, try and play some, try, try to be a little cute and play some head games with me and uh, swapped them out. But you can't, you can't get past the champ. I already know he was going to try to play some cute games like that with me. So I uh, plopped him back in and I uh, plopped AJ Brown back in too. Cause he's going to go down. I'll go down with him. But uh, it worked Fair. out. I got the better of me this week. Yeah. If it didn't go off. So yeah, he got the uh, me this week, but that's fine. I'll get him back in the playoffs. So yeah, <laughs> uh, good example was me too as well. I had uh, Yanu Smith and um, Steph Diggs. I actually ended up benching both of those guys, and I went with Hooper and Justin Jackson in those spots. Um, worked out for me. I still won this week, but mm -hmm. I much rather would have had the forty-two roughly fantasy points that those guys put yeah. up compared to Hooper and Jackson who put up yeah. what was it about 22 I think total or 24 total so in, in total I lost 20 some odd points by starting two guys that I really didn't want to start yeah so yep uh and this and this whole COVID thing throws in another monkey wrench where in traditionally your backup plan for your studs is always to to draft their handcuffs so that come playoff time if you need them okay well my star play like my star star running backs out well it's a good thing like you has handcuffed and you just start, it's not like that you it's actually worse if, if you're worried about COVID hitting your team in the playoffs you don't want their handcuffs you want a completely different running back on your team because because the handcuffs gonna get postponed too he's on the same team it's not a player thing it's a whole team thing so you know you got so you got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt on your team at the same time. I mean, having both isn't going to do you any good if the whole Browns team gets pushed to a week 19, you know, so. Um, yep. and, uh, and actually, now that you say that, this is a year where I've ended up with handcuffs just by, you know, the, my, my depth wasn't great. So I ended up going with handcuffs just to, you know, ensure myself. And now, like you just said, that could end up biting me, but you know, it is what it is, and everybody else is in the same situation. So, you know, you just got to make the best decision possible, whether whether it be that or whether you decide to go a different way. It's yeah, tough I think, right now. I think this year, more more than any other year that we've ever done this, uh, Lady Luck's going to have to be looking a little bit more favorably upon your side if you're going to win a championship this year. There's, there's a little less strategy this year and a little bit more luck going yep. on with any winning championships this year. So. Um, well, moving forward, how about we just get right into our matchup since we yep. probably have a full slate, not too many bye weeks this week, so we got full slate. So uh, what will we have on docket for, for tomorrow and Monday? All right, so first up, we have the Broncos at 1-3 and three versus the Patriots at 2-2. Two and two. Okay. Um, 1 o'clock game on Sunday. 
Uh, who do you have, Andrew, for uh, that matchup there? Who well, you I, got the, I got the Patriots winning this matchup. Cam is returning. Melvin Gordon is out. Uh, so I see Phil Blinsley getting some solid carries again in this game. Um, he's going to be probably my guy to target on the on the Denver side of the ball. I think he'll probably have the most – put up the most fantasy points this week. Um, on the Pittsburgh side – or not Pittsburgh, on the Pittsburgh. New England side, yeah. I, uh, I do see Cam coming back with a vengeance probably and putting up some solid numbers and getting that offense back more into a – more consistent flow and rhythm. Uh, if you have Cam on your team, especially against that depleted Denver defense right now, I would feel very confident in starting Cam Newton um, as, you, as your QB1 for this week's games. Absolutely. Um, for the Broncos, yes, I don't suggest starting anyone. <laughs> I mean, that offense yeah. is turmoil. Uh, the Patriots defense is pretty good. I mean, they're fifth against the running backs from a fantasy mm -hmm. standpoint. Uh, wide receivers, they're coming in about 22nd, but the problem is you got Drew Locke coming back from an injury. You don't know what's going to happen. You yep. might have Griffin starting um, or God knows who. Uh, is, uh, so is Fant out or is Fant in? I know he's dealing with actually, some Fant is actually out. So Fant okay. and Gordon are both out this week, which hurts. I mean, that's it hurts I mean, even maybe – Maybe in a desperation move. I mean, they, they got Cortland Sutton out too for the year. Yep. But so maybe Jerry Judy just might be the, the guy. But I would he say has that, not looked that great though. So even yeah. I know Drew Locke is back, but um, man, if you're in a if you're in a real pinch, go for it. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. But I don't. I wouldn't suggest starting him um, unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Same thing with uh, with Lindsey, and I only say that obviously Gordon's out, and I, I like yeah. your concept of Gordon's out, but um, you might see uh, Freeman getting some carries. Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I, I see him more in, in like a pass catching role, like a change of yes. pace back. Maybe yep. get gets more catches yep. out of the backfield. But I know they. I mean, this is probably giving the Denver offense a lot of credit if they can even get to the goal line, but. Um, they do like Lindsay on the goal line yes, historically, yes. so he might be able to vulture or not, not vulture. That would be Freeman who would vulture, but, um, yeah. might be able to get a, get, get cheap, you know, touchdown two off the goal line. Uh, in fact, this is probably one of them games where I see like Lindsay probably getting like the most like garbage time type points, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, uh, and, and a lot of check down stuff, too. I feel if yeah. he's in the game and all of a sudden Drew Locke's got three guys in his face, he might, you know, throw a couple of dumps, dump off to him. Yeah. If you're going to start anyone, it would be Lindsey. I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, and then from the Patriots side of things, Cam Newton. Uh, you got to go with Cam. He's back. I think he's going to have a good game from using his legs and his arm this week. Uh, the, the Denver defense, like you said, is kind of depleted. Um, the 26 for quarterbacks, I mean – so that's through the air. And then, I mean, they are first against running backs, but their style of play that could allow Cam still, with, when they drop back, it's going to allow Cam to kind of read the field. And if he thinks he can take off, get some of those yards on the ground, not to mention you get him down by the goal line and he's like a power back. Yeah. So, um, and I think the Patriots should control this game, uh, moving the ball down the field and everything else. So I think Cam's definitely going to have a good game and I would feel – wouldn't have a problem rolling him out as a QB one. Nope, not at all. Uh, what we got up next? Next, we have the Texans at one and four versus the Titans at four and zero. Oh. So first game with uh, with Romeo Crennel as the interim head head coach here. Um, Went pretty who, well for him. Yeah, who's their who's their um, who's their opponent? Texans and the Titans. They got the Titans. Texans and the Titans. Yep. Um, you know what? I, w I see a lot of uh, – I see, I see a ground-based game in this one. Um, so, I see a lot of uh, Derrick Henry. He, De Derrick Henry didn't have the best of games yes, or last week. I know he had some of those short um, – with, with the touchdowns. But the Bills held him in check uh, for the most part. No big gains. Uh, but they really didn't focus on, uh, on the running game too much against Buffalo last week. I really felt that. They tried to take advantage of the depleted Buffalo secondary and get some passes going. Um, A.J. Brown will be back another week. Uh, 
another week healthier by see Derrick Henry being being the guy to kind of break back out and then they get back to the ground game a little bit more as for Houston uh I see them probably uh be, being a good balance between pass and and run uh I actually like Will Fuller a lot in this matchup uh on the on the Houston side so if you have Will Fuller I think he's a really high upside um I think he's going to post some solid high-end wide receiver two numbers this week um, and then on the obviously on the on the Titans side, I see Derrick Henry probably scoring at least one, possibly two touchdowns. I think he's going to have over 100, 100 yards rushing um, as as well this week. Uh, I actually uh, think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think, but I do have Tennessee winning this game uh, probably uh, by a touchdown, but about seven in this one. So, what about you? All right. For me, I'm actually going to throw the wild card out here and say that the Texans come out and they win this game. It's going to be very close. A bold statement. But that's it, kind of my bold prediction of the day, if you want to call it that. Um, and the only reason I say they played pretty well last week after uh, Cornell took over, and I think they're going to kind of roll with that. Um, you saw, like you said, you saw Cooks have his best fantasy game and. Yeah. A while, all, all year a since time. with the with the with oh, the definitely, Texans. Definitely all year with the yeah. Texans. Um, and I see that continuing. Um, actually, for our daily fantasy people out there, this could be a stacking thing. Um, maybe you take Deshaun Watson and you go with Cooks because he's a little bit lower value. So if you want to roll down into the daily fantasy stuff, uh, this might be a good stacking opportunity. Um, I, I, they're definitely, I believe, they're going to be a better offense. Um, they just seem to be mashing a little bit. It's only yeah. one. It's a small sample size, obviously, but I, I do see it rolling a little bit. Mm-hmm. The Titans are coming off that big win against the Bills, um, and and I don't know. I'm just I'm feeling maybe a little bit flat after that. I could be wrong. Could prove me wrong. Um, but sometimes that happens. You know, they got all hyped up. They were all upset that people were writing them off and saying that there's no way they can win a game because of. You know, they didn't practice in two weeks, and they came out all fired up, and maybe they roll with that, but maybe they don't. That's yeah. why I'm going with the Texans in this one. Um, that offense is still good. Defense struggles a little bit, and you're right. Um, I see Derrick Henry. Uh, the Texans' defense is 24th from a fantasy standpoint So yeah. against the run. So uh, Derrick Henry definitely getting 20-plus touches, probably over 100 yards and a score, maybe two. Uh, if you have mm-hmm. him, definitely roll him out. I mean, that's almost a given, but – Definitely roll him out. Also, Andrew Smith, um, dude's the fourth tight end right now in fantasy. Um, playing well. He's playing very well. And Tannehill, 31% of that guy's passes go to tight ends. 31. Yeah. So I, I'm expecting, and he hasn't got less than, I believe, five or six targets in all of the games this year. So um, I, I'm seeing – a five plus reception game from him as well and possibly a touchdown. So if you have him, I would say roll him out as well. Um, he'll be a tight end one. So. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. So who we got up next then, Ryan. All right. We have the Browns at four and one versus Ooh. the Steelers at four and oh, should be a great game. Yeah. Division the rival game. game. They always play Good each game. other tight. Bad yep. blood there each and every time, and they're both playing phenomenal football early this year. Absolutely. Well, what, what time? Is, is, is this a 1 o'clock game? This is a 1 o'clock game, yes. I feel like I will probably be focused on this game quite a bit in, at, at 1 o'clock. I'll probably rotate through the games, but I'll probably focus on this game a lot because I think it's going to be a great game. Um, Nick Chubb obviously still out for a little while. Other than that, everything should be pretty – uh, copacetic there with the Cleveland offense. Um, it's, 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 it's a good defense there in Pittsburgh. Uh, I feel like when you're going up against a defense like Pittsburgh, you want to rely, uh, you want to build your game plan around your studs. Uh, therefore, I, I do see Odell having a pretty good game. I see Kareem Hunt having a decently good game. Now, when I say a, a decently good game, I mean that the game plan is going to kind of funnel through them. But Pittsburgh's a good defense. It's not like we're talking like 
10 catches, 150 yards, and like two touchdowns for Odell. That's not going to happen in this game. And same goes for Hunt. But if if you're going to pick someone off that offense to roll with this week, um, I would go with uh, Odell or Hunt. Uh, now I see Odell probably put, putting up low-end wide receiver two numbers this week. Uh, and uh, Kareem Hunt is uh, going to have some tough sliding as well. However, he is with, with no chub. He's just going to get the lion's share of the work. Uh, I feel like he can give you probably middle middle of the road RB2, maybe some high-end RB2 numbers just based off usage alone. Uh, I feel like most of that damage is going to come through, like, dump-off passes and screens, though. Uh, I feel like it's going to be some tough sliding. I don't see him getting 100 yards rushing in this game, probably somewhere between uh, – Probably, I'll probably peg his rush until around like 60. Um, and then maybe a score. He might have a score in this one as well. On the Pittsburgh side of the ball, um, boy, I know Deontay Johnson will be out this week. Uh, so that should elevate the rookie Chase Claypool a little bit, who played phenomenal last week. Um, I did go through and I actually watched some of the game tape on him during, during the week. Uh, four, four TDs is nothing to sneeze at. He did have seven catches in that game as well. He looked good. Um, a lot of those catches were just kind of like right place at the right time though. Happened to just be kind of touchdowns. Uh, I don't see him. I mean, you can't ever replicate a four TD game really. Um, Definitely I see, I, I see him being, being utilized quite well, but I do see uh, the Steelers probably rotating back to Juju a little bit more in this game. I think, I think Juju should have a, him, himself a pretty good game. Uh, I especially think that because they're probably going to put Juju more in the slot, which means that they're going to get him away from Denzel Ward a, a little bit there on that on that Cleveland secondary. And uh, James Conner should have himself an all right game as well. But if I had to pick a breakout candidate for this week, I am going to go with, with Juju. I think that he's going to get back on track this week, uh, which won't be the case each and every week for him. But this week – um, I do see Big Ben kind of looking his way up a little bit more than normal, and uh, he should probably put up some high-end wide receiver two numbers this week is how I feel. What about you? Yeah, um, I I'm kind of on a ditto here. Um, if you're going with anyone in that Browns offense, you got the number one overall ranked defense right now is the Steelers yeah. from overall defensive standpoint versus the number one ranked running back offense or rushing offense with the Browns. Um, granted, like you said, the Chubb is out. Um, so you're relying on Hunt there. Uh, and if you're going with someone from the Browns, I would definitely go with Hunt, even though overall they're fourth against the run um, for the Steelers, that is. So, but from a volume standpoint, catching the ball and rushing the ball, I, I would say between 50 and 100 yards for Hunt still, just because he's going to get probably – 15 to 20 touches at least uh, in this game from uh, rushes, I should say. That's not even counting in the uh, opportunities he might have out of the backfield catching the ball. So I, I would say you could roll with him from a, I'd say har high RB2, low RB1 standpoint still just because of volume. Uh, OBJ, yeah, I think so. Uh, I would see he should have a decent game. I, I would diddle that. Even maybe Landry. Only yeah. say that because they might uh, target, you know, and try and shut down OBJ. So that might open yeah. up Landry a little bit uh, from the slot. So we'll see there. I wouldn't necessarily say roll him out, but once again, that goes down to if you're kind of in a pinch, you got Landry, you're hitting some bye weeks, and you got to throw a guy in. He's definitely not a bad dude to throw in there. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like Austin Hooper in this matchup either, no, especially with. I, I don't uh, like Hooper at all. No. Nope. Do not roll out Hooper. I believe they're ninth or tenth. I believe for against the tight ends. Yeah, yeah. Minka's uh, Minka's up. playing some good good football, and I feel like that's probably who's going to be shadowing the tight end yep. most most of the time. So, yep, yep. agreed. Um, and for our, the Steelers, I would say roll out Big Ben. Honestly, if you have him, yeah. depending, uh, some people do do um, you know, they they play the matchups. They roll with two quarterbacks, and they play the matchups. If you've got Big Ben, 25th, uh, that Browns defense is 25th against, um, you know, for quarterbacks. So they're not great. 
Uh, they're definitely weaker against the pass than they are against the run. So they're going to be trying to kind of like you said already, they're going to be throwing the ball a little bit. And I see Claypool having a decent day as well. Uh, and like you said, Juju definitely, Juju and Claypool having a good day. Uh, if you have James Conner, be cautious. Uh, that Cleveland rush defense is pretty strong. So be cautious with him depending. Um, but obviously he's, he's still a, you drafted him where you did for that reason. So depending on who else you have, you're probably rolling him out. But if you have another decent option who has a better matchup, it might be worth benching Connor for whoever that might be. I would agree with that as well. Um, I do have Pittsburgh winning this game, but it's going to be close. Yes, uh, agreed. Yeah. I have Pittsburgh winning as well, but it will be a tight matchup, and um, I, I expect Big Ben to have a big day. Yep, should be very entertaining. Uh, who we got up next? We have the Ravens at, Ravens at four and one versus the Eagles at one three and one. Hmm. Uh, I know Lamar had himself a little bit of a tough game last week. Um, I see this being a little bit of a bounce back game for him. In fact, I do think Lamar probably has a hundred yard scramble in this game. He has yet to have one this year. Um, if my numbers are correct, um, I see him really being the guy. Roll him out with confidence this week. I got Baltimore winning this game. Um, I think uh, I think Philly Haynes pretty tough in the in the early part of the game, but come second half, I think I think Baltimore really starts to pull away a little bit. Um, I think Philly's game plan is going to try to be control the clock and keep the ball out of Lamar's hands. So I see Miles Sanders being a get some heavy work early on, uh, especially with the Philly receiving course still being pretty decimated with with injuries. So. Sure. Uh, Sanders is going to be the guy to roll out with this week, just based on usage alone. He should he should be able to give you somewhere close to some low end RB one, high end RB two numbers. But that Baltimore defense is pretty, still pretty good. Seems to always be good, no matter what year it is. And yeah. uh, I think I think I think Lamar is going to eat this week. Uh, so yeah. so this one was pretty easy game to predict. Uh, I'm dead on it. Agreed. I got the Ravens in this one. Um, I don't think it will be very close. Um, I think the Ravens will kind of get out to a, a pretty big lead early, honestly. That uh, Eagles defense is not great. Um, right now they're ranking 20, uh, 26th against receivers, 29th against tight ends. So I have Mark Andrews in this game for the Ravens having a big game. I got him going anywhere between 50 to 100 yards, probably two scores. Um, you also could throw in uh, Marquise Brown. I think Marquise Brown's going to have a good day. And like you said, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's going to eat for sure in this one. Yep. Um, and the way that style of the Eagles defense there, I believe, like you said, he's going to have quite a few rushing yards. He's just the way that he's going to see the field, and he'll have those opportunities with the defense dropping back. Um and then for the Eagles, Miles Sanders, obviously you're rolling him out. And you're yep. probably rolling Zach Ertz out too because tight end position the way it is. Um, and when you drafted him, you drafted him high enough thinking he's going to be every down tight end and or every week tight end essentially other than his bye week, even though he has struggled early on this year. And I yeah. don't see him this week picking he it up. He had a really bad week last week too. So. Correct. And the week before that, he didn't have a great week, but he yeah. was saved by a touchdown. Um, you know, I really think that uh, I was high on him um, once Goddard got hurt, but going into the season, I was – I really didn't have him on my board at all. I've even heard some rumblings that the Eagles cut off contract talks with him early on in the year. Yep. Um, that's never a good sign. Um, I, I just feel like the their offense was getting ready to transition away from Ertz and go with Goddard. Now, I know Goddard getting hurt probably threw a little bit of a monkey wrench in those plans, but I think the wheels were already in motion to start start to get away from Ertz. And uh, yeah. just kind of – I mean, I don't see Ertz being being an eagle next year, so. I don't either. Um, I don't either. But like you said, with Goddard getting hurt, so he's still that offensive weapon, and now they're going to kind of have to ride him. And I yeah. think once Jackson and um, Jeffries get back, I think yeah. that will definitely help because it'll free him up a little bit and they won't be able to emphasize so much from a defensive standpoint on him. Yeah. So, but until that happens, I mean, 
who do you got outside in Philly? Exactly. Er Ertz isn't only their best tight end, he's probably their best receiver at this point, too. All you got. Yep. And and, and just until they get some more healthy bodies back. I mean, Alshon's working his way back. Um, I know that I know their their rookie Jalen Rigor is working his way back. He's still on IR. He's still yeah, they took a offer. really high they, – they, they took a high draft pick. I think he was, what, the second or third receiver off the board? Yes. Yep. So so they took him over some other pretty high-profile wide receivers, so they think pretty highly of him there in Philly. Um, you got to imagine he's going to probably factor in and play a significant role in the second half of the season. So he's someone to keep an eye on for sure. But, uh, um, yeah, just uh, right now they just don't got enough firepower to keep – keep up with the Ravens. So Ravens, Ravens by possibly double digits in this one. Agreed. Who we got next? All right. Next we have the Washington football team at one and four versus the New York Giants at 0 and five. Who was the first team? The Giants and the Washington football the Washington football team. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I, I just I said here you see it again. It's just it's still so yeah. like Surreal to me to hear it. It is like a fun, a fun thing to say though. Um, man. Or as I have them on the sheet, WFB. What so. a, what a game. This one will probably be. Um, you know what? I uh, I've been having a really big crush on Antonio Gibson lately. He's he, he his his oh, increase. <laughs> yeah, his. I, it's not just because I have him on my team either. He's his his usage is increasing each and every week. He's yep. he's really kind of pulling away with that job. He's not only their RB one. He's clearly the most talented running back they have on that roster too. And he's a really good pass catching running back. He, I mean, I don't think he's had less than like three catches in, in in a game. And that's even when he was like really splitting carries early in like week one and two. So I see his usage usage just keep like keep going up. Uh, especially with the change at, at quarterback. I think they're going to really rely on um, Gibson going forward. As for New York, um, I was encouraged to see what Devonta Freeman did last week. Uh, they, I think another week will really help him out, and he'll, they'll really try to integrate him in with the offense. He looked pretty good, all things considered. Um, I still really like – and then – Washington's pretty stingy against against the pass too. I think they were seventh, they're seventh in the league right now against pass, if I if I remember right. Yeah, um, over overall against uh, wide receivers right now they're pretty weak, but they're third against tight ends. So okay, so yep. all things clear with that. I uh, oh I, sorry, I, I had that flipped. I had that flipped. They're third against the wide receivers and they're twenty eighth against tight ends. So. For me, okay. Ingram, I was going to bring that up, but go yeah. Ahead. So there you go. With uh, Ingram could be a really nice streaming player. I'm not not streaming. Nice play for you this week. Yep. yep. Um, because he's really been, yeah. He's what like the? I think I looked the other day. He's like the 25th or 26th ranked tight end he, in the league or yeah, something. Yeah, right outside of the top 15, right around hovering between that 20, 25 mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah he, he is. He is yet to have. The breakout game I thought he would have at this point in the in the season, so he's probably due. Um, I I would feel okay with rolling him out this week, um, and then Freeman was obviously my my pick along with Gibson, uh, and then not for nothing I actually did pick up uh, the Washington football team's defense this week as my streaming option. I actually picked them over uh, New England, who was also available to me as really? well. Yeah, I, I I really was high on the Washington football team. I think that that defensive line that they have there can can really get after it. Um, and uh, I just I don't know. And plus, it's the New York it's the New York Giants offense without Saquon Barkley. So um, yep. they were they were my pick for the streaming defense of the week um, for me. So what do you think? I will go right off from that. Um... And I will say my streaming defense for the week happened to be the Giants um, against okay. Washington football. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't really have How much difference. Options. We are. <laughs> I didn't have much options at this point. Um, I'm, I'm totally in streaming mode for defenses, and I have pretty much blown through my uh, free agent money, which, yep. you know, a lot of people do at the start of the year. 
I fell right into suit this year. Um, yeah. But anyway, so uh, I, I don't see that Washington football team's offense really doing much. I, I do like Antonio Gibson. Like you said, I'll diddle that. Um, I just see him having a good game that for the Giants, um, mm-hmm. they're, they're weaker against the run, sort of, than the pass. Um, they're relatively strong against tight ends, but from a running back standpoint, like you said, he's the most talented back on that team. And now that they have Kyle Allen starting a quarterback, I definitely see them leaning on Gibson a little bit. Um, and as the year goes on, he will definitely be, I think, an RB2 for the rest of the year. Um, so um, while we're on the topic of defenses right now, this team is on a bye this week. Um, I was So I have to mention now, otherwise I would completely forget about it. Um, if the Chargers defense is available in your league, I would really recommend probably taking a hard look at them and picking them up now uh, before other people are aware of their upcoming schedule. I really, really like their upcoming schedule. I feel like they can be your starting defense for multiple weeks. Now, the Chargers are hurting with some injuries, but they should be getting some some players back over the next few weeks. I know Derwin James was a big, big, big one who got hurt. It was lost for the years, but it's still a really talented defense. Uh, coming up after this bye, they got the Jaguars, and then they got the Broncos, followed by the Raiders. That one's a little bit, could be a little bit of a tough game for them. That was tough. That was tough. But, but then after the Raiders, they got the Dolphins, the Jets, and then they got the and then they got the Bills. So that's kind of like where it ends. But you potentially got yourself a starting defense for the next probably four, maybe five, five weeks going forward. So that's a good chunk of yep. the season. Yep. Um, I just really like those matchups going forward. So um, not one to keep an eye out for, I would say. Agreed. What do we got What we got going on next, unless you want to add in anything to our uh, Not much other than I would say you kind of mentioned it, Devontae Freeman, he kind of has started to really take hold of that running back role since Barkley got hurt. Um, I know they signed him. It took him a couple of weeks to kind of get going. Uh, he would he would kind of be a sleeper pick this week for uh, daily fantasy as well. Um, he should be a little bit cheaper. So if you're kind of going down that road and you want to grab him, that might be a good one. And we already mentioned uh, mm-hmm. Evan Ingram, you know, with that uh, Washington football team's defense ranking, you know, in the bottom half there, they're 28th against tight ends. So, they're definitely weak there. Um, but other than that, the Giants offense is not good. They're just not good. So, um, or they haven't shown to be very good this year. Uh, yeah. Beavers have been beat up a little bit. Uh, Daniel Jones hasn't really done much. You know, he, he, he's been very inconsistent. So yeah. um, rolling anyone else out on that team is yeah. pretty tough right now. For sure. But next, we have – the Atlanta Falcons at 0 and 5 versus the Minnesota Vikings at 1 and 4. Oh, this is a tough game, man. man. <laughs> you know what? And I feel like these are two teams who should be better than what their record is. Absolutely. And start well, everyone on these offenses. I'm just going to throw it out there right yeah. now. Go so, ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Falcons were. <laughs> I mean, this is <laughs> this is going to be a receiver battle. I mean, I know Atlanta was dealing with some massive injuries. I don't. I'm not sure if. Um, some of them are coming back this week or not, but they've um, also been hit by the COVID bug though too. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, basically feel confident starting any receivers in this battle, in this battle, Kelvin Ridley and Julio, they're going to eat. Yep. Uh, and then same goes for Thielen and possibly Jefferson as well. I, I mean, Jefferson in there. I mean, yep. I hope the game, like I could see this being like, you know, like, 42 to 45, you know, right. by, by the end of the week with both, both QBs, you know, um, kissing about 400 yards passing, you know, going forward. This is, this is going to be one of them like, like stag games. Plus it's going to be, they both play, um, they're both used to those turf indoor turf, which is typically put, produces the better fancy points, you know, being indoors on that Astro turf with the fast, yep. like you just play faster. I mean, yep. I mean, holy cow! If, if if you got one of these receivers on either team, you you gotta be licking your chops this week. So, um, you know, I I'm gonna go with Atlanta to win this game this week, uh, especially with Dalvin Cook out. 
Uh, and, uh, yeah, hey, if you got one of these receivers, sit back and enjoy and make yourself some popcorn and enjoy the show, man. Yep, I've got the same thing. I, I'm betting uh, high 30s to 40s in this game for both teams. Um, even if you've got Todd Gurley, I'm to roll out Todd Gurley this week, fellas and ladies, just do it. Um, roll them out. Same thing, like you said, Julio, Ridley, Matt Ryan, start that whole offense. Um, mm -hmm. Just because what I kind of see happening is <laughs> what is, well, not necessarily happened to the Falcons all year, but, you know, they uh, are going to either get out to a big lead and blow it, or they're going to be <laughs> down by a bunch and need to score. So they're going to be chucking the ball. Um, yeah. they're gonna be, you know, offensively, they're just going to be going for it. Same thing with the Vikings. If you got Madison, roll him out. If you got Thielen, roll him out. If you got Jefferson, he's a great flex play this week. And if you are looking from a daily fantasy thing, again, if you're looking for a cheaper receiver, Jefferson might be a guy to grab. Yeah. As well as Kirk Cousins. So match your Kirk Cousins with your Jefferson there. That could be a that yep. could be a goal. Um, and Kirk Cousins is a great streaming quarterback this week. If you're someone who streams quarterbacks, great guy to grab. Yep. I think he's going to have a big week against that Falcons defense because that Falcons defense is bad. They're they're last in the league for quarterbacks like they're 22nd against the or 26th sorry against the run they're 25th for receivers they're 31st for the tight end so they're in the back half of everything I mean so, I mean you saw what Aaron Rodgers did against that Falcon secondary and Rodgers was basically rolling out bag boys he found at, at the local grocery store at right. yeah, they last picked week. them up from Walmart so, like yeah. they, you know I so. mean I mean and he was carving carving that Falcon secondary up I mean I mean, let's make no qualms about it. Like the I mean, don't get me wrong, Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Famer. He's a great quarterback, as yeah, we know. But it was but, it was who was catching but, the ball on the other end. Correct. So, exactly. I mean Oh, and I never mentioned um I do have the Giants in that last game. I didn't bring that up. Um I had the Giants barely beating the Washington football team in a okay. defensive struggle. Okay. And in this one, I have I've still been trying to decide, honestly, guys, because this one's tough. It's going to be a high-scoring game, and I'm going to go with the Falcons as well. Um, I just yeah. think they got a little bit more firepower, especially with Cook being out. So, I like it. I like it. Who we got up next? All right. We have the 1-4 Lions versus the 1-4 Jaguars. I'm going to take Detroit to win this game, unfortunately. But I think the Lions win this game. Um, I see Kenny Galladay having a pretty good game this week. Uh, he is yet to really have a good breakout game. And it just seems like one of those games where you just kind of want to, uh, you know, it's one of them like go through the motion type games and you kind of like your studs get like your studs are your studs. Your studs are going to win you this game this week. Galladay is probably the best receiver um, on that on that Lions offense. And they've been a pretty quiet offense so far this year. Um, I know Galladay was battling some injuries earlier, so I think it's a nice little bounce back game for him. As for the Jaguars, their offense has been surprisingly a lot better than what I thought it would be. Um, I believe D DJ Chark is trending out at the moment. Uh, it's going to be a game time decision that will obviously really hurt them going forward. Um, James Robinson's been playing really good lately. Uh, so obviously start him with, with confidence. Um, however, more of a sleeper pick, but becoming more well-known is especially, I mean, I would feel confident with this, even with Chark in, but even if Chark is out, uh, that will, if Chark's out, that's going to elevate him even more, but LaVisca La Chenault, the rookie, the all-purpose rookie has been seeing his targets increase each and every week. He's becoming more comfortable in that offense. He is becoming more, uh, integrated into all aspects and he's looked good he is a tough guy to bring down and he plays very well in space um i believe he's scored just about pretty close to double digit points in ppr leagues in every single game this year i mean he hasn't he hasn't broken that 20 point ceiling but he, you know he's hovering around that 10 to 13 point range so he's been consistently solid he hasn't he hasn't put up a single dud for you really yet this year um I'm surprised because I think the last time I looked, he was only rostered in like 40% of leagues. 
So if he's out there, he's someone you should really keep an eye on because um, I think his role just continues to grow the, the longer the season goes on. And he's already ha has a pretty good um, – he's got a guaranteed spot in this offense, it looks like. Um, yep. So he's someone to definitely keep an eye on. I was really surprised to see he was so low rostered. Uh, he can be a solid, like, flex play for you week in and week out, I feel like, if he keeps up this production. I mean, you can do a whole lot worse than 10 to – 10 to 13 points with the possibility of getting more later on down the road. So um, I'm, I'm not one to ever pass up guaranteed points on a week-to-week -week basis. So he would be my pick this week to nice safe pick with some high upside. So. Yeah. Uh, while we're on him, uh, he was actually a target of mine uh, and considered highly considered in our um, dynasty league, just because kind of high on him coming out of the draft um, took him relatively high. Uh, didn't end up getting him, but you know, who, his target who got him? Down. Who got him? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. I got Irv Smith Jr. We can go there later. <laughs> and actually, he could be a surprising sleeper pick for the Minnesota Vikings in the last game that we just talked about this week. He could be. But he it's actually kind of got some targets and got some things well, going. Hey, but big Bob anyway. Tanya in Green Bay hit. Had had himself a three touchdown game against them, so uh, yep. against that Falcons yeah. team. So so yep. there you go. Anyway, back to this game. Had to throw that in there real quick while we were on it. Um, yeah. So for the Lions, um, I would say definitely roll out Stafford if you're a guy yeah. once again going back to the streaming type thing um, with quarterbacks, or if you have two and you have Stafford and someone else, depending on who that other person is, um, I'd roll them out. That Jaguars defense is definitely uh, pretty weak when it comes to quarterbacks. They're uh, 27th. So um, running back, actually. I know that Detroit backfield for the last how many years, Andrew? Um, lots. Has just been terrible or you've never had a guy that you could really rely on from a fantasy standpoint. How long they, has it been since they've had a 1,000-yard rusher? Very, very long. I can't, they've only had like – Two, yeah, two one two one hundred yard games in like the last like five or six years or something like that. Like it's, it's only, been rough. It, yeah, um, been some tough sliding. For a sleeper for that, I'm actually going with DeAndre Swift. Okay, um, wow. They're not very strong. The Jaguars aren't very strong against the rush, um, and I think he's going to see a slight uptick in carries this week. And actually, maybe catch the ball a little bit on the backfield. I know it's not a strong suit, but, you know, um, I, I'm going to – that's kind of my pick, just throwing it out there. So, a um, little bit less of Adrian Peterson this week, I think, and a little bit more DeAndre Swift. As the year goes on, I think that swing is going to happen, um, and I think this will be the week that it kind of starts, uh, especially with the Lions being at one and four. Um you know, get those rookies, start getting them involved as much as we all love Adrian Peterson. You know, it, it is mm -hmm. what it is there. Um, like you said, Kenny Dalek, Galladay, if you got him, you're definitely rolling him out. And Hockerson, roll him out, baby. TJ, yeah. roll TJ, out. TJ is ready for a nice little breakout game. I would feel – and he's – I think he's like – he's played okay. He hasn't had like an amazing game, but – He's been fairly solid for tight end. Uh, it's been yep. a little bit of a down year yep. for tight end so far. You haven't really seen tight ends like, really, like, dominate. I mean, Darren Waller's, like, 14-catch game stands out to me. But other right. than that, I haven't seen, a like, a really dominant, dominant tight end performance this year. Yeah, so. I mean, other than Kelsey, Kelsey's been Kelsey. but Kelsey's Kelsey. And I think I think Kittle had a really good, like, week one or week two. Yeah. Um, yep. But but even, even Kittle's been held in check a lot. I mean, he, yep. he had the injury where he was out for a week, but – he was hurt. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, tight ends but, have been tight ends. So. Yep. Pretty much, it's been normal. This was the more of a deeper class, honestly, than we've yeah. had for tight ends. But yeah. you know, they've been tight ends. Mm -hmm. uh, but twenty fourth. You know, that's a decent matchup, and I think yep. he's like you said. I got him definitely scoring a touchdown this week. Um, I'm rolling with it, and I got Stafford throwing three touchdowns. So. Roll Stafford out. Um, for the Jaguars, like you said, Robinson, I like him, especially with Chark being up in the air. If Chark doesn't go, there's an uptick for him there. Uh, the Lions, 29th. 
So, you know, bottom half there for sure. Yeah. Um, so you, you definitely, if you have him roll him out and he is definitely becoming a more household name, if you want to call it that, uh, especially from a fantasy standpoint, uh, sit Gardner Minshew, especially yeah. if DJ Chark does not play sit yep. Gardner Minshew. Don't do we all remember what happened against the Dolphins a few weeks ago when Chark didn't play? Yeah, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, that says it all right there. Yeah. Um, if he does play, I still I don't like the matchup. Yeah, I don't, I don't They're love not it. great. I just I don't I'm not trusting Minshew yeah. at this point. Yep, I would agree. I believe probably next I think you're probably going to throw out the Bengals on the Colts. Yes, yes, we're going to throw the Bengals and the Colts out. And just for that, I had the Lions winning that matchup. Oh. Yeah, I think I did say I had the Lions win that matchup as well. I don't remember if you did, but I didn't. Yep. I do get the Lions. Unfortunately, not a Lions fan, but get the Lions yep. win this one. So, going, moving forward, we got the Bengals and the Colts. Uh, I'm going to throw a little bit of an upset here. I think the Bengals can pull this one out. And, and I like it. I think they can, but they're going to have their work cut out for them. Um, that, Balt- that <laughs> Baltimore, that Indy <laughs> – Baltimore. They, they used to be Baltimore Colts, <laughs> but, uh, that, uh, but that indie defense is no joke. They're one of the best in the league. Very yep. underrated defense. Uh, Mixon's going to have his work cut out for him, so I do think that they're going to win this game, that Joe Burrow is going to have to be the guy in Cincinnati. He's going to have to throw up, put up some solid points, and I don't think it's going to come from one receiver. I think he's going to have to spread this ball around. He's going to have to get all of his playmakers involved, which is why I'm not going to pick a single receiver. I'm just going to put this one on on Burrow. He's going to be my guy in this one, um, but he does have his work cut out for him. On the on the Colts side, um, I do think this is probably going to be a game where they're pretty balanced for the most part, um, but I do think Jonathan Taylor is going to get some pretty solid work early on in this game. They're going to really try to – get him involved. I don't see this kind of getting away from any team either. I think it's going to be a pretty close game all, all, all throughout, which means that um, no team's ever going to really feel too forced to have to throw the ball um, to, like, play catch up. So I think that the game plan and the flow of the game is going to really lend itself to Jonathan Taylor getting some solid solid uh, carries in this game. So he'll be my pick on the on the Indy side, but I do got Cincy winning it, but it'll, it'll be really, really close. What about you? Um, I'm going with the Colts in this one. I just think that that since the offense with Burrow, as much as I like Burrow, and I think he's going to be a great quarterback, that rookie, I think the rookie is going to show on him this week just because of how strong that Colts defense is. Um, I mean, they are, that Colts defense, they're first against opposing quarterbacks, they're third against opposing running backs, they're seventh in the league for a receiver from a fantasy standpoint, and they're first against tight ends. So all of those categories, they are in the top 10. So that's that's a tough matchup for a rookie quarterback. Like you said, Mixon's definitely got his work cut out for him. They're going to have to lean on him. Um, if you have Mixon, I would say probably roll him out because they might lean on him a little bit more um, than normal. It's tough to say for that. I don't really want to roll anybody out for the Bengals offense this week just because of how already mentioned how tough the Colts defense is and uh, Joe Burry and as young as he is. Um, for the Colts, yeah, Jonathan Taylor's probably going to have a big game, I would think. Uh, they're going to lean on him a little bit. Uh, Phillip Rivers is probably going to throw a couple picks like he normally does. Uh, a surprising sleeper pick here. Could be the tight end from the Colts, okay? Um, they're 21st from a fantasy standpoint. Okay. Eagles defense is for covering Colts or covering tight ends. Uh, Mo, I'm forgetting his last Mo name. Mo Ailey Cox. Yes, Mo Ailey Cox. I couldn't remember the end of that. Um, thank you for that assist there, Andrew. Um, I, I could see him as a sleeper pick and really actually having a decent game. He hasn't really done a ton this year, but that's kind of where the weak point is. So maybe they'll target him a little bit more. Yeah, um, I, I could see that happening. That's a solid sleeper pick. I do have a sleeper pick. Um, not saying that he's going to get you 20 points, 
but all of a sudden he gets four catches and throws in a touchdown, you know. If you're someone that streams tight ends, there's some, there's some t- there's some guys out there that like to stream tight ends. So if you're one right. of those guys, there you go. Yep. There you go. And I have, like I said, I have the Colts winning this game. All right. Uh, we should be coming up on our final one o'clock game, which is going to be the Bears and the Panthers. I believe. Yes. Uh, Bears the four, and Panthers. four and one Pan- Bears against the three and two Panthers. So one of so some teams that have had some pretty good early luck in the year I uh despite not having McCaffrey for this game I do think the Panthers are going to pull this one out against the Bears um while the Bears are really good I I, I think that they <laughs> their 4 one record uh is not indicative of their true talent um I do think that they're a, they're a good football team but not a 4-1 team uh I think that the Panthers have uh Pretty good all-around team this year so far. That will only get better when McCaffrey comes back. Um, and uh, Mike Davis has played sig- really, really good in uh, um, McCaffrey's absence. So it almost makes me wonder if it's more of a system thing than a player thing. For even though as talented as McCaffrey is, but I see uh, um, someone who's really played really good this year, and I think keeps it up this year is Robbie Anderson. Um, I see him having another really good game, um, especially a home game with the Bears coming in. I really like Robbie Anderson in, in, in this matchup. Tough matchup for him, but I, I, I agree. Yep. Yep. I just I I think he's gonna be able to get one or two over the top in this game, and he, and he, and he should play really well. But he's been playing really good on, underneath football as well, and those slow Absolutely. crossing routes and stuff. So I, I'm not sure how many hundred yard games he has, but it he's had like. Yeah. Two or three hundred yard games already this year. You know? Yeah, he's played really well. I'm really played surprised well. with him. Yeah. Um, especially thinking that it was going to kind of be the DJ Moore show, but it's really been the Robbie yeah. Anderson show there yep. in Carolina. So good for him, though. Good for him. Yep. And Absolutely. then uh, on the other side of the ball, uh, I, I do see uh, Alan, Alan Robinson's just been playing really good football there in Chicago. I think he should probably keep it up going forward um so he's probably the safe pick if you own him you're starting him with confidence i don't, I don't think chicago is going to do anything try to be too cute or too fancy with, with, with what they do they're a team that's just going to stick with what they know works and they know that um falls to robinson works and that's probably what they're going to really design their game plan around so uh but i do got Carolina winning win this game but it'll be a really close one what about you um, I've actually got the Bears winning this one. I'm going to take the Bears. I, I agree with you. Um, I don't think they are as good as their record shows. Um, and I think on that side of the ball for the Bears, I've got Montgomery having a huge game this week. I thought about Montgomery. That Carolina defense has given up over 100 yards a game to running backs. I mean, you got Cordell Patterson after him, who they've been working in a little mm-hmm. bit more, but Tariq Cohen's gone um out for the year I believe uh so I have him having a really big game this week actually um receiving and rushing the ball mm-hmm. rushing hopefully he actually puts up a little bit better numbers for you see he's only ran for like I think his top rushing yardage this year's like 50 yards he hasn't done a ton mm-hmm. on the ground but um I, he's averaging since Cohen went down he's definitely seen an uptick in targets out of the backfield mm-hmm. too uh, from a receiving standpoint, and I, I see him – the the Panthers are last in the league against running backs, so I see him really having a good game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're going with an Allen Robinson, you can't go wrong there. Obviously, you're going to roll him out like you said. Yeah. Um, automatic start every automatic week. Automatic start. And, and I would say this week go with Montgomery as a start as well. Yeah. Automatic start. Um, not normally. You know, normally he's that flex play range, but – this week I see him more of an RB2 to a possibly, depending, low-end RB1. Mm-hmm. Um, for the Panthers, Panthers at, at Bears defense is tough, man. Um, I don't see Bridgewater having a great game. I mean, he's going to be consistent like he always is. He doesn't turn the ball over really. He's probably going to throw one touchdown, maybe two. Um, Mike Davis, you got to roll Davis out because, like you said, it's, it's almost seeming more like a system thing than a 
you know, player thing. As Check down. Talented, Check downs. As talented and great yeah. as McCaffrey really is, it's definitely from a fantasy standpoint. Now that you see Mike Davis just kind of flipping into this role, you know, it's yeah. definitely a system thing, which is great that I just kind of scooped him up in our uh, dynasty league. So he's been winning me some weeks. But anyway, um, so other than that, uh, I don't know. I don't really see much. Robbie Anderson, obviously, he's been playing well, so I roll him out. Um, and then the Panthers, I mean, the Bears aren't great against tight ends, but the Panthers tight end, and they're, you got Yeah, them. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I got the Bears, and that's my take on that one. So that should that should conclude us for the one o'clock games, which yep. brings us into the four o'clock games. We only got two because we do have two Monday night games this week. Yes, so we our first of the four o'clock games is going to be the zero and five Jets against the two and three Dolphins. Yes, uh, an AFC East battle. Uh, you know, I'm going with I'm going with old Fitz Magic, and I see my. I mean, hey, easy pick, man. Miami in this one. Jets Miami. are dumpster fire. The Jets are there. They're bad. Well, you know what? This is going to be the only the only game where I'm not picking a player on the Jets. I don't want to start any player on the Jets. Don't pick them up. Don't don't start any Jets player. Um, for me. Agreed. As for as for, <laughs> as for Miami, start Ryan Fitzpatrick with confidence. I'll say it. You're starting that man with confidence this week, especially against that freaking Jets defense there. So uh, I know Gaskins played well, but. Fitz is going to have at least three touchdowns in this game. Ryan Fitzpatrick is my guy. Jets okay. are, are, are the Jets are losing this game. Dolphins are winning. Pretty pretty cut and dry for me. So, yep, I would agree. Um, the Jets absolutely are a dumpster fire. Um, I'm taking the Dolphins to get to three and three. And kind of touching on when you were talking about the uh, run that the Chargers have for the defense. Um, coming up. The Dolphins are a better football team, I think, than a lot of people are giving them credit for. Yeah. They're starting to show it. Um, I think Miles Gaskins is going to have a big week. Good. I'm going for him to have a big week. Um, I only say that because that Jets defense is ranking right now from a fantasy standpoint 28th So for against running backs. So, you know, bottom half for sure. Uh, I think they're going to work him on the ground and through the air. I got him having two scores this week. So if you have Miles Gaskin, put him in your lineup. Um, I like it. I like Jets it. Side, just don't start to anyone. Don't Just don't do it. Just leave him out of your lineup. Put him on your bench. Actually, most of them you can probably drop at this point. Minus, with the exception, with the exception of Jamison Crowder, if you have him and you're yeah. in a tight spot, if you've got him, yeah. you're in a very well. tight spot. Crow's He'd be the well. only guy that I would put in the lineup for a f- uh, flex play, you know, if you need a guy. And I, I just think they're going to be down, so they're going to be throwing. Flacco will be slinging it all over the place. Yeah, I'll give you that. Flack, or Carlos played well. He's really the only guy that they got anyway. At yeah, point, so. that, that's all they got. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're me and you have no choice but to start Michael P. Ryan, I hope no one else is in this situation. Um, you never know. Everyone. Could be could be a gamble. Could not yeah. be. But that one's pretty cut and dry, pretty quick and simple. Moves us on to our 430 game, probably America's game of the week. It's going to be on TVs everywhere. We got yep. Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, the Bucks versus the Packers. Uh, should be a really good matchup. Can't wait uh, to watch this game. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a good one. For sure. Uh, the Bucks defense, uh, they got a really good defense. Um, and then the offense is the offense. I know they're all hobbled with injuries, but for the most part, I think everyone should be playing this week. Um, do you know, have you heard anything about Godwin? Is, is Godwin coming back? Godwin, this week? I believe Godwin is a go. Last yeah. I heard, um, I'm pretty sure they took the questionable tag off from him. He yeah. was a full participant. So, Which means uh, Evans is, is going to be good to go too. Um, yep. So... They should be pretty close to full strength there on the offense. Uh, however, I do think that the best way to beat Green Bay is going to be through the run, which means I think that, do you know, Fortnite is playing this week? Um, I have not checked. I did just confirm, though, that Godwin is definitely a go. 
Okay. And for net, one second here, and I will be able to tell you. Fournette still has the questionable tag, but they expect him to play. So Okay. So, um, well, I know that PFF has Jair Alexander ranked as the best corner in the NFL so far this year. He has been playing amazing. He did shut Calvin Ridley to a dud last yeah. week. I mean, I mean yep. that's, that's some ball that's football right, right there. Very uh, good. With that being said, I don't think that Jerry can cover everyone on the on the Bucks offense. True. So I think that so instead of just picking a specific skill player, I'm gonna go with Tom Brady as my player this week. I think that Brady's gonna be able to move the ball. He's gonna spread around like Tom Brady does. He's gonna spread the ball around, hit the open guy, and I think the open guy's gonna be there for him on like just about every play. So I see Brady putting up some really solid numbers in this game. He would be my guy to, to play this week, my pick for breakout player on the offense, yep. um, which in turn, then also uh, it would make sense to kind of go with Rodgers as the, as the breakout player on the other side. However, Tampa's secondary has played surprisingly well this year. Um, I know Devontae will be back this week and he should, he should get his, but I, the Bucks run defense has not been as solid as people has, have expected it to be. And they also just lost all pro defensive lineman Vita Vea for the rest yep. of the year. So my, my breakout player is going to be for, is going to be Aaron Jones on this. I think that Green Bay is really going to be able to run the ball on them. Whereas Brady's going to be able to pass the ball. I think Green Bay is really going to try to establish the run pretty early in the game. Um, so <laughs> Uh, can't really can't believe I'm saying this, but if anyone's watched any of my earlier podcasts, <laughs> I believe it was probably podcast two or three that I did with uh, Cody, uh, who I do my watch parties with, where we did a game by game breakdown of the Packers season. Um, I did predict that the that the Bucks were going to win this game this week, um, so I'm going to probably still stick with that. No, even though Green Bay's playing has been playing amazingly good football, I'm not going to go back on my word. I will unfortunately pick Tampa to win this game, but that does not mean I will not be rooting for Green Bay to uh, prove me wrong. So I hope they do. But this is uh, this is going to be one really tough matchup for them. Uh, plus, it is in Tampa, so I will give some home home field advantage to them, and I think there will be some fans in the in the stands for this one as well. But not that it means too much. But that is my take on the game. All right. That's going to be pretty tough to go with you on that one. Um, or to go after you, I should say, on that one. Uh, it's a great analogy. Um, for the Bucks. I agree with Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady is going to have a good game. Um, just distributing the ball, like you said, kind of moving around. It's, it's tough to say, especially with Godwin back. Um, I believe Scotty Miller is going to play as well. So that's going to mm -hmm. give him another option from the slot standpoint. Uh, so I just think Tom Brady will be Tom Brady moving the ball between his backs, um, his tight ends, his receivers, just finding the open guy and doing what he can. Um, he's going to put that forgetting that it was fourth down or, you know, behind him. I think he's going to move forward from that, even as you know, as embarrassing that mm -hmm. Uh, probably was <laughs> it was probably a little embarrassing <laughs> so anyway um but I do also think if Fortnite for some reason doesn't end up playing that uh I would definitely roll out Ron Jones obviously uh yeah. if that doesn't go it's a kind of a toss-up but if Fortnite goes it's gonna be tough it'll be a split for him there I I mean the the Packers aren't great against the run um, at least they haven't ranked great against the run this year. Kenny Clark should be uh, back this week, which should help them. But okay, still, that'll help that aspect. Yeah. Um, but that, that could be a, a possibility for you there. Um, for the Packers, like you said, uh, Aaron Rodgers, he's going to be Aaron Rodgers. Uh, definitely the Aaron Rodgers of last year is not here this year. <laughs> he's playing great. Love to see it. I do like me some Aaron Rodgers as well. Um, Aaron Jones, yeah, you can't go wrong with Aaron Jones. And that's kind of the weak point, especially, like you said, mm -hmm. that without Vivek in the lineup. Um, 
I, I think he's going to do well through the air and on the ground. I think they'll target him quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. With Adams back, like you said, uh, I think they're going to still throw the ball, obviously, with Aaron, and um, that'll take away a little bit from Jones, but I think that'll be the focal point. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to go with the Packers beating the Bucs in this one, putting Tom Brady in those Bucs at 3-3 three and three and, uh, you know, kind of putting them on the on edge a little bit and, and needing to perform the rest of the year. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I love it. I hope, I, hope, I, hope, I hope you're right, which moves us on to our Sunday night game, which is another pretty good doozy. Uh, I don't think – it's another one where the records I don't think are indicative of how good a football game is going to be. It's the Chargers and the 49ers, the 4-1 and one Chargers against the 2-3 and three 49ers. Oh, hold on. They had a schedule change. So oh. it is actually the 4-1 and one Rams versus the 3-2 oh, 49ers. Okay, I, I do see that now. Yep, the you Chargers are right. The Chargers team My got bad. moved. Yep, the My Chargers bad. team got moved. Yep. So four and one Rams against the two and three 49ers. So should be a good game. The 49ers are two and three, but they're they're healthier. They're getting healthier. Um, Grapple should be back this week. Kittle's obviously back. He returned next week. Mostert should be back. Um, so I think it's going to be a really good matchup. Um, I'm actually going to take the 49ers to win this game. Uh, I think 49ers win it. And uh, I, <laughs> I think that uh, with Raheem back, that, that should certainly help. But I think this is a this is a Kittle game. I think it's going to be a good breakout game for Kittle. He was kind of yeah. held in check last week. Uh, I can't remember the last time Kittle's ever had two back-to-back -back really, like, dud games. So uh, Kittle should be a big part of the offense this week. Um, I hope not, because I think I'm going up, going up against him this week in fantasy. But I think that he'll probably probably eats probably has himself at least one, if not maybe two touchdowns in this game. Uh, as for the other side of the ball, I see Cooper Cup being the guy that really kind of opens things up. I think everything's going to kind of funnel through Cooper Cup this week. Um, uh, that, that's that's not taking anything away from the other receivers. I think Robert Woods will get plenty of targets this week, but. I think the I think the 49ers outside secondary will do a good job of shutting him down, which should force Goff to look more inwards to Cup, and that's why I think Cup will have uh, the better day of the two this week. Um, but I do have the 49ers winning this game, uh, and I think it's going to be more low scoring than what many people predict. I'm like thinking like 21 to like like 18 type thing, 17, 18. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I'll start out um, on the 49ers side of the ball as well. I think Kittle will definitely have a good game. That's kind of the, the weakest point, I think, of that uh, Rams defense. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the tight ends, covering tight ends. So they're very good against receivers. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to be your focal point there. But I think Moser is actually going to be my breakout guy. Um, I think, like I said, Kittle will have a good game. But with him coming back, I think they're actually going to feed him the ball a little bit more than we would expect, especially with him just coming back there. Um, he played last week, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, I was going to say, he played last he week. Like, I, he, he, he had like four catches for 44 yards or something like that. Yeah. So, But I think they're going to get him more involved this week with it being his second week back. Um and, and I think they might attack him a little bit more there. Uh, obviously, whoever the 49ers quarterback is, don't start them, don't have them. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter who they are, but just I don't. agree. I agree. Uh, and for the Rams, I'm actually going to say start Jared Goff. Uh, I think he's going to distribute the ball. I think you're right. They're going to shut Woods down a little bit. Um, Cooper Cup will have a solid game. And – Going to go crazy here. I think Higby is actually going to have a decent game for the first time all year. Okay. Yeah. Higby, Higby's been a little bit disappointing. Okay. This is kind of my flyer. It's kind of out there. Um, there isn't a ton of numbers or anything to really back that up, but I'm just feeling Higby. Higby and Cup will be the targets here, um, kind of down the seams in the middle of the field. 
Um, and then for the Rams running backs, obviously that's a three-headed monster, mm-hmm. especially with Akers being back. It's tough to judge who's going to get the ball there, so stay away from them, at least until we kind of figure out. Until it sells itself out. Until it settles and who's going to be the actual yeah. guy. But Goff, Higby, and Cup. Higby oh, being yeah. the I like and it. And I have the Rams winning this one. Okay. All or right. By a touchdown. All right. We got, I like it. I like a little different opinion. Um, and what a treat this one will be. Uh, we got two Monday night Monday games. Night. We got the first being the Chiefs and the Bills. Um, so we got the four and – both teams are four and one. Uh, both teams – I mean, this should be a good game. Um, five o'clock on Eastern time – which means this thing's coming out at 2 o'clock on the West Coast. Yeah. I mean, holy cow, yeah. people are still working at 2, but. That kind of stinks, but. Yeah, it is what it is. But, uh, wow, I'm sure you're going to have a good year. Day about this game. Uh, oh, man. I, I think I think it's going to be a pretty high-scoring game, man. I think this will be a quarterback duel. Um, yeah. So, for me, I think it's going to be pretty pretty cut and dry, man. I think, I think on both sides of, of the, no matter which team, I'm, I'm going to pick the QB to be my top fancy guy of the week, Mahomes and Josh Allen. I mean, it's going to be a shootout, I think. They're going to be chucking the ball around, which means that the receivers are both receivers on both ends are going to be good fancy plays. Um, but I think the ball does get passed around to some different players, which, you know, uh, quarterbacks, Allen and Mahomes. Uh, Buffalo looked a little disappointed last week, but so did Kansas City. Or not – yeah, Kansas City losing to the Raiders. Yep. So, man, I uh, – you know what? I think Buffalo's got a solid, solid chance of winning this game. Uh, but it's really tough for me to ever go up against Mahomes and, uh, and the defending Super Bowl champs. I'm going to take Kansas City in this game just because I feel like there's a safer pick. But I would not be surprised to see Buffalo win this game, though. So, uh, that's my take. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Man, I am so excited for this football game. And I just want to say to all the mafia and everyone else out there, I can only imagine what this game would be like if we could actually have fans in the stands. But we'll leave that there. Um, It's disappointing. Would have been great to see. Um, This would have been electric. But um, so on the Bills side of the ball, I got Allen, obviously. I I think the Bills that we've seen for the first four weeks of the season are the Bills that you're going to get for the majority of the year. I know you Mm -hmm. could say I'm being biased right now, obviously. Um, But, no, I think that's – they played well. And I think last week, honestly, having to prepare for the Chiefs on possibly Thursday night or the Titans on Tuesday night, Mm -hmm. I think that did affect them a little bit. Not an excuse. They didn't play good. They didn't show up on either side of the ball, really. Um, but I think Allen gets rid of those mistakes that he made last week. Um, he, he made a few bad decisions. I think I think he gets rid of those and gets back on track. Um, like you said, if you have digs, roll that dude out. He's getting between 8 to 12, 13 targets a game. Allen and him are connecting on a, a, a strong level. Even if John Brown is back. If John Brown is back, it's probably going to help him even. It'll free him up a little bit more. Allen will distribute to the ball, the ball to John Brown, but I think that's going to open Diggs up for more touchdown opportunity. Um, not that he won't just go up and grab one for you anyway, because he's a great possession receiver. And you can go get that thing. Um, but uh, running back, stay away from Singletary, uh, Singletary and Moss, because Moss is back this week. I think it's going to be a timeshare. It's going to be a bigger split, even though Moss is just coming back. Uh, so I wouldn't roll either of those guys out. And then on the Chiefs' side of the ball, you're rolling out Mahomes. You're rolling out, especially rolling out Travis Kelsey. The Bills are awful at covering tight ends. Awful. Kelsey is going to have a huge game, as much as it hurts me to say it, unless the Bills do something different. Um, I think he's going to have a big game. I think you see Mahomes targeting him quite a bit and moving the ball down the field through him. Uh, I'm going to say two touchdowns for Kelsey this week, at least. I, um, I hate to say at least, but I, I'd say two. Um, also, if the Bills defense doesn't step up a little bit this week, um, 
they're going to be in trouble as much as an offensive game as we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, It hurts me to say, but I'm also going to take the chiefs in this one. Um, I took the box. It's, it's, you know, it it is what it is. I think the bills are going to play a lot better, but I I think the chiefs are going to come out on top by a field goal, just by a field goal going to be a tight game. Um, I think, I think if Buffalo plays them really tough and they and they keep it to within a field goal, I would see that as a potential win. Oh yeah, as, and, there's a lot to take. There's a lot of positives to take away from and, that game. Then, and so. if you give and if you give Josh Allen the ball at the end of the game with an opportunity to win, he has proven that he can do it. Um, and they might be able to pull it out, but I just see Kansas City um, edging them out in this one. Yeah. Josh Allen, Josh Allen certainly can do it as long as he's got the refs on his side, but yeah. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm not just talking about that Rams game. Yeah. He did it last year, too. Yeah, he did a lot last year. I'll give you that. <laughs> he did do a lot last year, uh, which will move us on to another really, really good uh, doubleheader on Monday night. Yeah. Um, we got we got the Cardinals and the Cowboys. I know NFL uh, – Brass was probably hoping for a little Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray action, but instead oh, we get yeah. Kyler Murray and Andy Dalton. Um, but Andy Dalton's going to be, you know, he's a competent quarterback. He's been a starter yeah, for over over ten years. I mean, you can do a whole lot worse than Andy Dalton as your as your quarterback. And Absolutely. I would say Andy Dalton's got the best weapons around him than he's ever had ever in Cincinnati. So, no doubt. Uh, Andy Dalton should do fine. Obviously, a little bit of a tick down from Dak at this point in Andy Dalton's career. But uh, I got Arizona winning this game, though. Um, I think that Arizona's going to keep doing what Arizona does. And uh, I think that, you know, Hopkins will have himself a really good game, especially against the Dallas secondary. Um, I think I think um, you're going to see more of a – I also kind of want to stay away from the, the Drake – admins thing that's getting to be a little bit of a timeshare there going on the Cardinals seem to like admins a lot more than what I thought going in, into the season um, yep. in fact admins has been the better running back of the two over the last few weeks so um, I mean I think both are probably decent flex plays at this point but that's probably all there are but you didn't draft Drake to be a flex play you know you drafted no, him you know the one and yeah. that has that certainly hasn't hasn't happened uh so, but if you got Edmonds, you know, on a late round pick or even on a waiver wire pickup, you got to be pretty happy with what he's done for, with you so far. So I, I feel fine with either of them as, as, a, as a flex play. Hopkins will be a wide receiver one. Kyler Murray will be, Kyler Murray will put up solid QB, QB one numbers for you, I think, in this game. Should, it could potentially be another shootout fest, especially in the, in the dome there in Dallas. So sure. I, see, I see a lot of passing yards on both quarterbacks. Um, but, but I do think with Dallas, I think that, uh, Dak's injury is going to kind of elevate Zeke a little bit more going forward. So I, I do, I do see McCarthy probably trying to get Zeke a little bit more involved. So he's probably going to be my pick in this matchup on the Dallas side to kind of put up better numbers than what you're used to. Um, I also do see Cooper having himself a nice little rebound game, uh, going forward. Obviously there's some different miles to feed in Dallas, but. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to see someone like, like like Cooper at his talent level have, have two back-to-back duds. So Cooper should have a pretty nice rebound in this one. He might even have himself a touchdown, but he'll have at least probably five to six catches, if not maybe more. Um, and he'll probably see double-digit targets easily in this game. So that's kind of where I'm at with this, but I do see the Cardinals winning. Yep. Um, agreed. I have the Cardinals winning this game. Out of the sheer fact they don't have Dak, that Cowboys defense has been horrendous. Um, Mm -hmm. They've really struggled, and I just don't see them, you know, picking it up too much from that side of things. So um, I see DeAndre Hopkins having a huge game. I think Murray is going to make that dude eat and just feed him the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you got him, roll him out, baby. And this is another for your daily fantasy with people stacking. That's another great opportunity. You're going to have to spend a lot of money on those guys. Um, but that's a great stack yeah. with Kyler, Mon- uh, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins there. Um, and then you just find ways to fill out the rest of your lineup um, with decent matchups going with a few cheaper guys. But 
um, yeah, it's I a see. Prime, it's a prime time game too, and those prime time yep. games usually tend to get into like some shootouts going on. So yep. it's yep. never a bad idea to like to, to like if, if you're a DraftKings player, it's never a bad idea to really focus on on those prime time games. You hardly ever Agreed. see see like defensive battles on prime time games. The NFL yeah. pur- purposely schedules shootouts. Yep. You don't see a lot of 10, you don't see a lot of seventeen ten or ten no. six games on uh, Monday. The NFL so, doesn't want to promote that, so no, absolutely not. Um, yeah, and like you said, with Chase Edmonds and Drake, it, it's unfortunate for everyone who drafted Drake. Um, he was not high on my board this year. Uh, I just didn't, you know, with what's happened with him in Miami, I considered him, you know, but I wasn't trying to draft him. Right there well, in the back. Half if of that you look round. at his, if you look at his stats, even when he went to Arizona, he played well. But like, he finishes like it's RB one when once he went to Arizona. But most of his stats came on like two or three breakout games. But then the other games, he really yep. wasn't he wasn't was, much of anything. He just average. hasn't had a breakout. I mean, he's due for a breakout game here or there to really boost his numbers up, but you're going to have to go through probably like three or four duds before you get a breakout game right. from him. So and the problem with that is you have no consistency there. So yeah. you're losing a lot of fantasy football games, possibly if he was your number one draft pick, Yeah, you know, which, which sucks. And it's a struggle, but I agree with you there. Um, hopefully, you know, for everyone who drafted Drake, uh, he can turn some things around, but if you didn't draft Drake, hopefully you're able to snatch up Edmonds and depending on what happens there. Unfortunately, like you said, they're more flex plays than they are RB twos or ones at this point. Yeah. Um, Cowboys side of the ball, I do see Andy Dalton being Andy Dalton and having a decent game. And you are correct when you say these are by far the best weapons he's ever had. By far. Um, you know, he had AJ Green back um, in Cincy, and then he had Jones there for a little bit. You know, Marvin Jones Jr. But it was, you know, he, so he's, he's, got far, three-headed, uh, he's got a three headed monster now though. So correct. which is, I'm excited to see what he can do with it. Um, he's definitely a guy. If you're streaming quarterbacks to keep an eye on, that could be something for you for the rest of this year. Uh, that turns into a, maybe you don't have to stream anymore or maybe you snag him. Yeah. He has a great year. I would, but, I would still temper um, your expectations. If you're thinking that you're going to get like Dak Prescott 2.0, you I definitely aren't getting that, that but, no, you're not but, getting that, but, yeah. but you might have a top 15, top 10 quarterback the rest yeah. of the year. You know? I, yeah. I could definitely see top 15 the rest of the year yeah. out of Andy Dalton. Temper your expectations, see what happens, but keep it in the back of your mind and watch him. Uh, you you got to remember that a lot of what Dak does is getting outside of the pocket and hitting guys, extending yep. plays and wait till they get open. You're not going to get that with Andy Dalton. He's he, He's a – he, he's a pocket passer now at this point in his, his career, so he's going to be looking to get. He's going to be looking to get. I, I actually think you're going to be looking to get the ball out quicker. So it's going to. So the yep. receivers that are able to get separation quick and earlier are the ones that's going to benefit the most, not the ones that you know excel on yep. um, broken Deep down route. plays. And now yep. I haven't broken down Dallas Dallas's film. I don't know which which receivers are the ones that are excelling with, with like broken down plays. Like maybe that's why CD lamb's playing so well is because he's the one that's, you know, benefiting from these broken down plays right. when Dak scrambles, maybe, maybe you see more less from CD lamb and more from like uh, Gallup and Cooper going forward. So. I mean, it's a small sample size, but Dalton really seemed to target Gallup. So he's another guy that he's probably rostered, um in most leagues but he's another guy to keep an eye on because in that second half of that game he really did target him quite a bit and he had a decent game yeah uh, but like you said i i'm not sure we'll see how it shakes out uh he's definitely more of a pocket passer than Dak. uh zeke zeke will definitely have a big game here i think yep. um they're gonna have to use him a little bit and utilize him and lean on him hopefully that cowboys offensive line picks it up a little bit um they they've been okay but they haven't yeah. been Cowboys offensive line that we've known the last couple of years. Yeah. So who do you um, got winning this one? I have the cards winning this one. I just All think right. uh, same. Yeah, yeah. With Dalton coming in, yeah. you know, and, and the cards offense is very good. And I just think they're going to have a big game. You know, not for nothing. Jerry Jones did, did 
come out and say that Cowboy fans need to adjust their expectations going forward for the rest of the year. Absolutely. And that's never a really good thing when, yeah. when the owner of your team says to, to says, says to adjust your expectations. So Especially Jerry Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. Jerry Jones. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you, you definitely, if you're a Dallas fan, I'm sorry. Um, temper those expectations. Not the season you thought you were, you were going to have, but. Not without Dak. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is what it is. And um, you never know. They can turn things around, but it's not looking great this point it's still early but we'll see yeah we'll see and that that defense too that defense just needs to for the cowboys needs to step up they've, they've been pretty awful so giving up a lot of points well you guys we did kind of just throw this one together a little bit at the last moment i thought it went a whole lot better than, than what i anticipated next week we will get back to the uh the powerpoint presentation with even some more uh detailed breakdowns as well Going forward, we're kind of figuring our stuff out here, and we seem to have a pretty good system on paper going forward. So we'll start implementing that in the future. Um, I hope you guys have a great fancy week. I hope uh, if you get any of our fancy advice uh, and it helps you win your matchups this week, that you'll consider subscribing to us and and continuing to watch us and support us. Um, but if if anything else, it was fun doing this with you, Ryan. Uh, good, good luck time. in your matchups this week as well. Yes. So. Thank you. Good luck to you as well. And um, yeah. to everyone out there, good luck in your matchups. Hopefully this helped you out. And maybe we can get some things out a little bit sooner for you yeah. if you do like what we're talking about. So that way maybe we can talk about some waiver pickups and other things like that as well. Yeah, uh, I would we love to. Later in the week and it gets tough. I, w- I would love to hear anyone's uh, – um, how their how your fancy matchups went this week, and if anyone's got any like uh, trade questions or anything, uh, comment below, and uh, I'll be more than happy to analyze any of your trade offers and uh, offer my own suggestions or opinions. So, um, unless you got anything in the last minute to add, we'll uh, let I you guys get going good. and uh, have a good football Sunday, you guys. Have a great Sunday and a good weekend, guys. Good luck. See ya.